director and now chairman of bjp banking cell for arranging bank loans currently sir is director of deen dayal institute of management chennai which is an bhus of site campus welcome you sir and without wasting much time i am connecting you to our participants sir thank you all the participants good evening to all of you thank you for the good introduction given by dr shashank shashank ji and uh, i am very happy to be amidst you today for an important subject which is concerning the entrepreneurs now as uh, he was mentioning during the talk i started my banking career in the year 1972 it's almost going to be 50 years i have seen a lot of sea changes in the pattern of financing so we had only one opportunity with the 1972 and rather up to 90s till we had the economic reforms in india we had to access only the banks for the funding so the number of entrepreneurs coming forward and getting bank finance and all that were very far and few the ecosystem for entrepreneurship development was rather extremely poor and many had to take to job that was one of the reasons even though we never lacked in intelligence or uh, intellect whatever it is there was not much of uh, entrepreneurship except the family business who were having some family business they were continuing with those things so today what we are going to do is that uh, that today the ecosystem for entrepreneurship development for startups has undergone a massive change and it is going on changing day by day you might have seen the recent uh, public issue of uh, zomato a loss making company it was over subscribed several times so the earlier concepts only companies which are doing very well in uh, say consistently having good track record and all that can raise from the capital market and all that all those theories have gone are not applicable no more today because it's only they look at the future potential what they look at is not the past past is an indicator but future they look at the what is the potential for zomato and all this uh, swiggy and all that in the indian economy the online the what is going to happen in the next five years so people assess based on those point and they invest so the investor appetite today is also for the msmes please don't think only the large corporates there is a separate uh, exchange for msme in uh, bsc and nsc and uh, day by day more and more companies are getting listed and uh, it is very easy to get funding through the uh, msme for, for the msme through the bombay stock exchange and nsc but the yeah, startup immediately cannot get it say maybe about 2 to 3 years and they are not very rigorous uh, like uh, any other ipo and all that but that is easier to get the finance and uh, we were able to get finance for a large number of companies through the capital market you know the capital market is uh, flush with funds people are looking for good projects even today when i talk to the banks and all that they all tell me uh, dr ramanan please uh, give us good projects we are ready to finance and there are so many schemes which we are going to discuss so today what our talk is what are the types of funds available for an entrepreneur as of date as of date so let us take that as a, this one first one is the self funding see you might have seen for every project the promoter has to have a stake that is because the the world world theory was telling that for every project at least the promoter should bring 10% of the project cost you know how your project cost is uh, estimated taking into account all the fixed capital and the running capital the total of both working capital and fixed capital is a project cost so land building they are all fixed assets then whatever our working capital expenses like rent salary so you need to have a very good business plan an excellent business plan you must have the basic requirement for an entrepreneur is see when you are convinced about that particular project have a strong business plan so when you go and meet someone you just cannot say that okay i will arrange to send it then they know the stream is lost in the discussion the first one is self funding bootstrapping is one of the sources the first and main source because when you go and discuss with any venture capital fund or any banker or any merchant banker first they will say what is your stake in this business 
how, how much you can bring. It's not a must. Please don't think that uh, if you are not able to fund a project, then you cannot start a project. That uh, concept is wrong. So, but money also can come from our friends, relatives and all that. That money is also taken as, you know, two words are used in finance. One is the debt, another is equity. Very commonly, these words are used. They are used in various contexts. Debt is the borrowed money in simple terms, and equity is the owned money. This is very simple. So, in, even if you are, you are taking the money from our own uh, friends, relatives, or parents, and all that, it is taken as equity. It is not taken as borrowing. Even though you may have to repay them, you might have got an understanding. Okay, let me start the industry after two, three years. Let me repay to you. Though it is repayable, the old definition, equity is what is owned and debt is what is borrowed. That is no longer applicable in this context. It can be taken as quasi-equity. Quasi-equity, what we mean is, it is neither equity nor debt, but the institutions will take it as equity. Because more the equity, more the borrowing power. In, in, the, in the finance world, more and more you have equity, then you get the borrowing power. It's about 3x or 4x, whatever it is, depending on the industry. Because it is called total net worth. The net worth is calculated from the equity you are having and the reserves you are generating in business. Though for a new entrepreneur, there may not be any reserves. Maybe after two, three years or over, you will have reserves. The reserves in the balance sheet is also taken as part of equity. So more you bring equity, the lenders are happy because equity represents the own funds, not the borrowed funds. Okay. So it is about three to four times that we call this as leveraging. Leveraging means more and more you are able to raise finance to the market. So because what we say is always do business with borrowed money. Never do business with your own money. Even if you are having money, don't invest all your money, even if you are having savings, what we say, don't invest in only one product. Nowadays, people are, you know, they are all investing in cryptocurrencies and all that, expecting a very high return. Okay, whether it is good or bad, it is being debated, and there are so many legislations coming. Some people say, yes, we got a very good uh, return on investment, we got as much as 100%. Some are telling, no, 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 it's a bubble, it will burst at any time. So on, on any investment, there can be two kinds of discussions. One can be for, one can be for against. You take a calculated risk. So, when you have own funds, don't put all your money in one venture. You have some with you. You also put some money in your project, but don't put your entire money in that project. Okay. So, the first and foremost source is a self-funding. It's called also as bootstrapping. So, suitable for business requirement for small However, they have got a lot of disadvantages. Okay. Then we have the angel investors. The angel investors, you know, in Chennai, I am speaking from Chennai, as uh, Dr. Shashan mentioned. So we had uh, this IIT health, this one, a medtech incubator. Then we happened to get introduced to each other. So I was invited to speak in this forum. I'm very glad that uh, I had an opportunity to once again talk to the entrepreneurs coming from Mirat. So here, the angel investors, today there are, if you open the newspaper, so make it a practice for entrepreneurs to read the economic times. I always tell, I teach in the business school, I always tell my students, they don't think that buying a newspaper like a financial daily is a waste of money or something unwanted. You must make it a practice because there you will find a lot of angel investments coming in. There's a Chennai Angels, promoted by the IIT Madras alumni, promoted by IIT Madras alumni, they have a Chennai Angels. So they always uh, go through the projects because, you know, IIT people are working all over the, all over the world. They have alumni. So many of the IITs from uh, Chennai or uh, Madras and other places, they are all in US and all that. They are prepared to help the entrepreneurs, the startups and entrepreneurs. So there is an organization called the Indus Entrepreneurs, TIE, T-I-E, you can note down, T-I-E, you can see the website, become a member. There's nothing wrong in paying a few thousands of rupees to become a member. After all, we are spending on so many things. Some investments, they produce results. So one of the investments which can give you a good understanding 
because you come into contact with the elite group, which is into entrepreneurship. This try is only for entrepreneurship. They organize every year, and you can also join the try in other states also. You'll be invited. You'll get a lot of messages. So you'll come to know who are all the angel investors for our projects. So these are who people who are high net worth individuals who fund enterprise for an equity stake. There are so many NRIs. There are so many people in India also who are, you know, they are directly lending. They are looking to, they take risk in the project even before it has become successful. In the startup stage itself, where the only you are the concept and all that, they are prepared to give even in the conceptual stage itself, the seed capital stage, where you are just starting the project, you have only got an idea, you are not gone ahead. Even at that stage, the angel investors are prepared to fund the project. There are so many projects which have been funded. I remember when I was in IDBA at uh, Mumbai, one entrepreneur came with a project. You know, you might, those who have gone to Mumbai are aware, there is one railway station called Churchgate Railway Station, where in the evening you find thousands of people, they come there to board the train there because the Bombay, the mode of... Uh, Public transport, even today, the most popular mode of uh, public transport is the electric train, starting from Churchgate or VBT, it is now called Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminal. Now, people take the train from there to go to their uh, residences or offices and all that. Now, this gentleman was telling from the, they are climbing down and going up, the energy is, uh, you know, passed on, that the energy is converted into, the static energy is converted into dynamic energy. And it is put to even whatever the electrical power requirement of the station can be met. Like solar energy, we are talking today. The rooftop solar. Every house can have a rooftop solar. You don't need to go to the electricity board for buying the power or getting connection. Your internal requirement of power can be met by rooftop solar appliances. So these are being funded by angel investors. The company, one of my friends' company in Gujarat, is making rooftop investors, one Mr. Neil Shah. So they, they are funded by angel investors. So the investors, they take risk in that project, even though it may not be proven, commercially proven, it has not uh, gone undergone the test of, uh, you know, it may be a totally an innovative project. We do not know whether the people will take it or not. Even at that stage, the angel investors, they take an equity stick. So they carry high risk and they get high return. They may continue with the business or after some time they may say, okay, as a financial investor, they may go out. Both possibilities are there. But most of them are strategic investors. They are not financial investors. Now we have got the third one, the called as a venture capital fund. This is very common. We might have had sessions on that. So I'm not only just giving a bird's view of that. It's a, it's a private equity. Even existing companies can get private equity. Because every time you need not go to the capital market and borrow money from the capital market. It's a long process, you know that. It's a long process and there are so many guidelines given by SEBI for that. So there are private equity investors available all over the world. So what they do is they provide the venture capital fund. Venture capital fund is slightly different from the angel investors. The angel investors, they come in the beginning itself. But venture capitalists, they come little later. They just see whether the project is going on, then they step in. Say maybe after one year or so, you have started the entrepreneur business, then they will come. So there are so many venture capital funds started by Sindhi Venture Capital is there, Gujarat Ventures is there, many state governments have also got venture capital funds. So you can approach them. That is one more source for you. The venture capital funds of the state government, you can go through the... Even NSIC has got a venture capital fund, National Small Industries Corporation. So these are all available. Only thing is, don't think they are all only on paper, sir. When we approach them, they make all kinds of uh, requirements. Naturally, because whatever the requirements have to be complied with. And there is nothing wrong in complying with that. It's a learning process. So when you start uh, making a project report or a detailed project report, techno-economic feasibility report, your own skills develop. I make it a point whenever I come across a new idea, immediately I take a notebook and then start writing. Because maybe it is useful to me on a later date. Even if it is not useful, it doesn't matter. I can just throw away that paper 
but it has added to my knowledge maybe after 2 years i want to know how many angel investors have been funded in uh, southern india some article came one year back in the hindu the newspaper so immediately i search for that i get the data so it helps me in the giving my lecture or making the entrepreneurs getting motivated for that so it's a form of private equity so they give on the various stages they they split that money whatever the venture capital fund they are giving it's a private equity they are come as equity shareholders you will have to say give your equity shares to them because what they will do is this venture capital fund when you go for public issue then they will give back those things either in the market or they will sell to the promoters they will sell at the market price to the promoters or they will sell to the investing public for example recently there so many public issues came where they they offloaded the private equity people they offloaded you know the go fashion a company which has been promoted by venture capital fund they were over subscribed from 80 times so they offloaded their investments because normally what they do is they don't stick to one particular company for a long time when they when they go for public issue they also disinvest their portion get back their money and then go to some other project which is doing a a higher return to them i have seen in the case of uh, food processing industries it is happening in large quantity there was a company in kerala which was uh, manufacturing this uh, blended masalas and all that so what they do is that they, they took from even the mtr brand what you are seeing in the market mtr masala and mtr ready to eat item they are all funded only through the venture capital funds in the beginning and when they went for public issue they disinvested their portion to the public at a very high premium and normally the venture capital fund they get a return of some have got a return of more than 200% per annum can you imagine your deposit in the bank getting 200% i tell my friends maximum you will get 7% 6% on your deposit in the bank you know many of the retirees many of the senior citizens they park their funds in the banks they park their funds in the various uh, uh, post office and all that what is the return they get they get a meager return of about 7% maximum or 8% today state bank is giving only 5.5% and the deposits are overflowing they do not know what to do with the deposit so what they do they don't lend the deposit what they do is they invest because the bank cannot do anything other than these two either they can invest or lend there are no other choice so a bank is accepting deposit for the purpose of investment and lending nothing else there are only two options so either they put it in government bonds where they get around 8 to 9% or they lend it to people around 11% beyond that they can't do anything so first at the seed funding stage the venture capital will come when you are starting the project then startup funding when you just start up just commencing the project is being just started you are acquired everything as an entrepreneur you are going to the seed funding is little earlier to that then first round is when you are ready for commissioning second round is you have achieved some the sort of say 40 to 50% of the capacity utilization third round is you are stable you achieve the break even level fourth round is take off stage where you go for expansion where you go for expansion so a venture capital fund comes with you right from the seed stage till the till you go for expansion then come to the fourth one is a crowdfunding crowdfunding is very common it is a contribution from a vast network of people you just go to the facebook or you go to open a website and then invite funds you tell about your project what is your project about you seek funds from the people who are all interested you tell them i can assure you a very good return i am a qualified technocrat i am an entrepreneur for example one person came i'll just give an example for crowd funding one we know very well i india is becoming a diabetic capital more than 40% of the indian public are suffering from diabetic including me so what we do we go to the doctor he prescribes insulin he prescribes tablets and every month about 3 to 4000 rupees you have to spend so many are not getting diagnosed for diabetes and all that there are so many people who are not got their blood sugar diagnosed so the crowdfunding is is very simple you know the ordinary mineral water 
we are all now taking only mineral water or the ro water so we have forgotten to take the well water and all that at least in metropolitan cities and uh, big cities we are taking this lady or aqua pina or all these things they are taking now he says that particular water if you take it can reduce the sugar it is a combination it is taken from one particular small lake in a village near tamil nadu in a village in tamil nadu near madurai but i heard of the place called madurai known for temples meenakshi temple and all that so those of you have visited near that there is a small place is called sunai sunai is a small pond small pond from that pond he takes the water purifies it fills it in that uh, bottle and sells it so the bottle cost about uh, not uh, 10 rupees the ordinary you are get the uh, ro water it will cost about 30 rupees but it is having that if you take it it has been certified by the indian medical council that it uh, reduces the sugar so crowd funding he got it about uh, say 5 to 6 crores he got from crowd funding and he was able to do that so there are three types of crowd funding one is equity funding people will take equity the investor will say okay i appreciate your project i am prepared to fund you but let you give me equity shares of our company second is reward based funding okay when you achieve okay you give me the reward only when you are doing some you prosper let me also take some share in prosperity say you are making a profit of 100 rupees or uh, uh, after 2 years give me some 2 rupees if you don't make profit don't give me anything okay reward based funding third one is donation based funding i am donating to you you know several several people donate for good causes okay if i am able to develop an entrepreneur who is able to give jobs to 50 people which i cannot do it he is a job creator let me help him let me help that gentleman who is helping the society at large what am i going to do with so much of money i am not going to carry when i die i never brought when i came into this world so let this money be made useful for an entrepreneur to create jobs so let it be a sort of donation but donation is a purpose you don't donate where it is not a deserving cause isn't it you donate for a deserving cause now initial public offering you might have heard one of the sources of the types of funds available to an entrepreneur but not immediately as i told you maybe after 2 to 3 years today the norms for ipo for micro and small industries is very very simple within one week we can get the approval of semi it is no longer very you don't need to appoint a very big merchant banker you don't need to give very big advertisements and all that it's all advertisement through the facebook and the twitter because there are hardly very few investors who are looking for but why the ipo is good is it has been certified by sebi or by some merchant banker who has seen that so it is a some people get a more confidence in it like a credit rating when a issue is getting credit rated you get a confidence okay somebody has independently assessed it is as a investment worthy so initial public offering for micro and small industries enterprises is increasing in large number separate exchanges have been formed by sebi in nse and bse and there are so many people who are offering these services for ipo so don't think that only share market is only for big industries like lens and all that it is for small unit there is a separate exchange today more than 1000 micro and small enterprises we are advising even those enterprises which are already potential in chennai we assess more than 2000 companies are there in that segment which can go for ipo when you go for ipo you get the market valuation you come to know what is your status in the market so ipo is a guy only when you can reach growth for more equity you get i told you a more equity more growth more bulk finance so ipo is a method through which you can cater to the you can grow otherwise you will be static we tell many of the companies okay you achieve 5000 crores turnover but it is nothing you should have to achieve 50000 crores turnover had you gone for ipo no no there are so many disclosure norms and all that sebi is very tight no where is the tight one after all 
people like um, uh, Mukesh Ambani and Adani, they have got only public company, public limited companies. Yeah, do you think that uh, they are all uh, they could remain as a private limited company forever? So you know, some people will misguide them. Some people will misguide them. So we tell them that IPO is a route through which you can whatever your real worth you can find out. And not only that, you can grow like anything. Otherwise, you cannot grow. Then the sixth one is the subsidies from government. Now here I must say that many of the entrepreneurs, friends, whom I am also a mentor, I am a mentor for about 100 entrepreneurs, they are not aware of the subsidies. In your spare time, why don't you go through the, if you are in, uh, say, UP, you go through what are the subsidies available for you from the UP government. Go to the nearby DIC, District Industry Center. You will get the literature. After all, subsidies are grants from the government to support the industry. Now, when you get subsidy, you can include as the means of financing. The, suppose 100 rupees is a project cost, 10 rupees subsidy, you can always put it. And against the subsidy, you can get a loan. For example, today I am doing one project uh, before the discussion of a fish meal project. You know, from the fish, saltine fish, you can make fish meal and fish oil you can extract. There's a very good export market for fish oil. And fish meal, you can market it in the market. In the, like, you know, today you are having the fish need not be taken in the fresh form. It can be given a longer storage and it can be kept in the refrigerator and sold. Even for six months, you can take it. It has got a shelf life. Fish need not be taken immediately after you take it from the pond or from the sea. It can be stored and it can be processed and kept for a longer shelf life. I am a director of one of the companies. So this company has got a subsidy of about 50 lakhs from the Tamil Nadu government. It is given for fishery sector. They have shown it in the financing, but money will come out of some time, you know, from the subsidy. After the project is implemented, only the state government will release, not before. They will give a commitment. Provided you agree, you commission the project, you start production and all that, then we'll give subsidy. So we can arrange for a bridge loan. Till you get subsidy from the government, we arrange for a bridge loan from a bank or from a non-banking finance company, okay? Then the seventh one is the debt financing by banks. This is a very common one. It has been there for a long time. I know the most of the enterprises are financed through banks. It's a very common thing. The banks are supposed to do that and uh, naturally 80% of uh, funding for the enterprise comes from banks even today. So the percentage is coming down because of other avenues. Now non-banking finance companies are the major source. For example I am uh, associated with three companies, non-banking finance companies. Within one hour they will give immediately 25 lakhs to any entrepreneur. Hassles are very less. No such uh, very serious appraisal done by banks and all. So the government under the, our prime minister, they thought that this bank finance is becoming a very cumbersome and full of hassles and all that. Let us bring a mudra scheme. I am the mudra coordinator for the state of Tamil Nadu. So the mudra scheme is up to 10 lakhs. All enterprises are covered or any, any venture. Remember, up to 10 lakhs loan, either working capital or term loan. The project cost may be about 15 lakhs. Now, Mudra scheme, it operates in, you need not go and apply to every bank. You put it in the Udyam Mitra, that uh, website, the banks and the non-banking finance companies will approach you. And if any problem is there that every, every state has got a state coordinator, Every district has got a district coordinator. You can go to the lead, every lead district in UP or Bihar or Madhya Pradesh. Every district, there is a, in the district collector officer, there is a representative sitting of Mudra. You can refer the problem to them. But one consideration is your application should be complete in all respects. You need not give any security. It's a totally collateral free. Government of India is guaranteeing on our behalf. Who is giving guarantee? The sovereign guarantee from the government of India. So you need not worry about the guarantee. So the government of India is giving guarantee. If still the bankers are not willing to give, then you can 
complain to the Putra coordinator or to the MO operators. Any MO app, which is given, which is free, available, you can download it and lodge a complaint. Now, debt financing we have seen, then factoring, subsidies and grants. What is this? Factoring will come. No, when you are in business, you will have to sell on credit. You cannot sell on cash. Every business cannot sell on cash. It has to be on credit. Now, when you give on credit, naturally the buyer takes about 90 days time, maximum 90 days time it should take to repay you that money. Isn't it? What will you do for 90 days without working capital? Can you close your factory? Can you uh, stop buying raw material? It has to be a cycle. You should go on manufacturing, go on selling, go on getting the process. It is a cycle. So what will you do is the factoring organization takes your debt, book debt, gives you money immediately by discounting so that your working capital cycle is not affected. But this factory will come only for companies which are ongoing companies, not for a new entrepreneur. Not for a new entrepreneur. It will come after some time, say maybe after two, three years. But many entrepreneurs are taken advantage of that. Then the next one is the leasing. What is leasing? You don't buy that asset. In finance, what we say is never purchase an asset. Even if you have money, as I told you in the beginning, don't borrow. Don't use your money for starting a venture. Only use limited money. Borrow. More you borrow, then you will have more commitment to repay. Okay. Then leasing is, don't buy that asset. Take it on rent. Leasing is nothing but rent. Why do you want to buy that asset? Today there are so many finance companies which are willing to give you leasing. So leasing is a, you can avoid the uh, capital cost. Only you pay the rent for that. Okay. You pay the rent for that. So, you are able to do that. So, leasing, there are so many opportunities available. And uh, today, leasing is also done in outsourcing. You don't manufacture everything. You get it manufactured by some other company, put it to our brand and sell it. Like we are doing in Achi Masala in Chennai. We don't manufacture everything. Most of the items are manufactured. For example, ghee. Ghee is a very particular product which is by, you know, there are so many, open the TV, you find so many ghee advertisements. They are not manufacturing, they are only marketing. For example, Britannia, for example, Colgate and all that, they are not manufacturing. They are taken on lease or on outsourcing the industry. Okay. Then the supplier credit. Supplier credit is where your supplier gives you the credit. For the supplier, you have to make payment. He says, okay, you make payment to me after 30 days. For example, in the case of onion dehydrating units in Gujarat, we have seen, you know, onion is grown in large quantity in Maharashtra, Gujarat and all that. Now, what is happening to that excess onion growth? It gets, you know, perished. It's a perishable item. So, unless, they, unless it is used there, it will give a foul smell, you know that. So, what they do is, because of the excessive production of that crop, we suggested to dehydrate that onion. You dehydrate that onion. So the onion growers, they said, okay, we'll get payment after 30 days. We are prepared to wait. Like sugarcane growers, you know, sugarcane growers cannot get the money immediately. It has to be converted into sugar by the sugar factory. So they will give 30 days time to the sugarcane factory. 30 days or 45 days time. Because the sugarcane has to be crushed, converted into sugar and sold and the money has to be realized then only they can make payment to the farmer. How can the farmer get immediately after supplying the sugar cane? Same rule happens in cotton. Cotton is grown in large quantity in Gujarat, where I was the chairman of that particular bank, which uh, Shashwati mentioned. So in Surendra Nagar. So cotton growers, they have to sell it to cotton ginning mills, yard making and all that. So these are suppliers are giving credit. It is happening in oil also, edible oil also. Okay, then initial coin offering, it's not very common in our country, but the Bitcoin is somewhat similar to that. Bitcoin is somewhat similar to that, where initial coin offering is people pool their resources in one particular place, then they start lending in small quantities. They are not angel investors, they are not uh, venture capitalists, 
or they are not private money lenders and all that. They are only some people who have got some, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer funding, P2P funding we have got in India. Where, suppose I have got one lakh money, what should I do? I go to the bank and invest in the bank in a fixed deposit. I put it in the website, I have got one lakh. Those who are needing one lakh, take it from me, give me your offers. Somebody says, I will pay you 20%, I will pay you 18% interest, I will give you security of my flat, I will give you some gold article, I will give you some shares. You know, you are, you, need, you have got one, not only one option where you go to the bank and invest the money. It's called peer-to-peer -peer lending. That man is running an industry. He needs money. You are having money. So directly you supply the money, so you supply fund to the needy person, to the person who is in the running an enterprise. So he is giving you security or he may not give security. For example, it's a very big company like Tata. They are also taking initial copper, coin offering. Unsecured loan they are taking. They don't give any security. They just give a promissory note. I promise to pay after so much. The normally, you get a higher interest in this. Okay. Then revenue-based financing. Today, the banks are banks and non-banking finance. The common factor is the common factor is revenue-based finance. You have a cash flow statement, your projected balance sheet. Out of that, what is the deficit? I finance that. Okay. Then you have got the business incubators. What I was telling in the beginning, where you develop an industry. For example, the, in Chennai, the same where uh, people like uh, the one, one year program is coming. 12 months entrepreneurship incubation program, where with a stipend of up to 30,000 rupees, where intense you will be going undergoing the training. So that literature is also available to the people who are needy. I can forward it to uh, Mr. Shashwat and Dr. Shashwat, and he can forward to the participants. So the business incubators are becoming more and more active. This one, because you have a set schedule there. It's not uh, just like uh, talking about entrepreneurship, and then you go home, you forget about it, then you uh, start watching the TV. No. You are a dedicated entrepreneur. You are made to success. You are bound to be an entrepreneur. You are prepared. You are, you are selected. You are trained, you are provided fund, you are taught the nuances of business, you are given an enterprise. Only thing is you have to take it, scale it up. That's all. So the incubator, it gives you everything. With an industry, you come out. You enter without anything, you exceed with everything. Only thing is you will have to scale it up. So you are given all confidence. The day one, you may not know anything. But after one year, this is a training program given by that uh, uh, IIT Madras, and maybe others are also offering similar programs in various uh, institutes. And uh, you should, uh, those who are very serious about becoming an entrepreneur, I would advise you to undergo this uh, one year program. It's an intense program where you are in, coming in so many phases and uh, you are becoming in the through the business incubators. They arrange for the funding also. Because they have tied up with so many funding. For example, the VIT, Business Incubator and Velour Institute of Technology, has tied up, has signed an MOU with Indian Bank. So, with that project has been cleared, that particular enterprise, the bank is funding. So, these are another source of funding for you, where you need not go to the bank at all. It's just like, you know, some uh, you are uh, trained to be a teacher. You undergo a four-year course in teacher education, BSc, BA, or BA, BA. So you are trained to be a teacher. You are trained to be a college lecturer. You are trained to be a doctor, isn't it? Then they, they, you join after plus two. You become a doctor after five years or after undergoing the house surgeonship. You are a doctor. So you are a qualified doctor. You are a qualified engineer. Like that here, you are a qualified entrepreneur. Okay. Then equity funding by banks. This is a 14th one. It is very becoming nowadays very common because equity is something I told you that margin money you have to bring. They say, what is your margin money? What is your stake in business? How much you are able to bring? Say you are able to bring only 10% or 5%. Sir, even I cannot bring that also. I don't have any money. So what we say in finance, in entrepreneurship, the first lesson taught to me in IDBI was no project should languish for want of funds. 
just because an entrepreneur is not having funds he is having the entrepreneurial zeal the entrepreneurial trait the entrepreneurial culture the entrepreneurial mindset the entrepreneurial attitude these are all very important so when he has got all these thing finance should not come as a block he should not be forced to abandon his project just because he is not able to bring that investment so with that concept right from 1970s itself we had the seed capital scheme it has been improved 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 then today i got the startup funding which is the equity funding is it's not repayable it is not venture capital it is different from venture capital there you know venture capital i told you normally they exit or they expect a return of 24% 30% of the venture capitalists here the expectations are you even if your project fails okay no problem out of 100 projects then can fail isn't it it's not necessary that every individual who are born, who is born in this world lives up to the age of 100 some are dying immediately after one year or oh, one year child dies some are dying at the age of 30 some are dying at the age of 40 okay in the same way every project need not be successful there may be so many reasons for the project to fail okay so in this case if the equity funded project fails due to some reason or other the risk is borne by the bank they don't go for a litigation or they don't go for attaching the assets of the borrower go for a long litigation and all that you know even in foreign countries where i happen to deal with some of the entrepreneurs i found we were dealing with one of the cases in mumbai the financial capital of india there a yeah, canadian bank bank of nova scotia we were going for litigation and all that against the borrower they said in our country we don't go to the court at all for recovery of dues i was surprised in india every day you open the paper there's a case filed against so and so vijay malaya in the high court in tell uh, london against uh, some nirav modi we are going for litigation only litigation is not going to solve the problem we are seeing you are not able to sell by litigation so today what they are done is ibc code just change the management change the management many we are able to get 2 lakh crores we are able to recover the bad debts sell the company to some other person who is willing to buy it is through the national company law tribunal and the insolvency banking code so equity funding is a very safe method where the national equity fund for women there are separate schemes for to promote women entrepreneurship then you have got the nsic raw material scheme under the nsic raw material scheme also it is a indirect way of funding the entrepreneur for buying the raw material only you have to give the bank guarantee that also not 100% you give a nominal bank guarantee suppose you give a bank guarantee for 10 lakhs you can buy raw material worth 25 lakhs through the nsic scheme so please uh, as an entrepreneur please go through the websites periodically of nsic msme di development institute sidbi small industries development bank the various labs which have been set up by the government the csir labs they have got so many projects they are giving udyam mitra these websites you must constantly see say today i see the websites of uh, sidbi i see the websites of msme di nsic then the micron small industries ministry then i see the even the yesterday i received a message that we are prepared to fund projects for uh, entrepreneurs even up to 5 lakhs also small uh, loans and all that to the development uh, financing institution in us i got the message yesterday i circulated to number of people and so that is another opportunity coming actually when i prepared the site it was not so so i would have put it as a 17th source of funding now 16th and the last one coming up my discussion because of the paucity of time normally this lecture on uh, types of funding takes about 3 hours where i give the lot of illustrations and examples and uh, everything because of the time constraint and all this information is available in the website and you can also contact me at any point of time my number i have given to you through the whatsapp through the telephone you can always contact i can tell you the source and iso certification they are giving funds for that 
because without iso certification you cannot sell the product either in india or abroad you know that so what to do with that certification 50% is funded by msme development institute then marketing overseas travel you you know the india exports hardly 1% of the global exports india is the second most popular uh, populous nation isn't it and emerging economy sixth place in economy we say out of large 10 economies in the world we are the sixth place second most populous country and having the largest number of micro and small enterprises more than uh, 10 crores we are having contributing more than 40% to the gdp of the country but if you see the export performance it is very dismal hardly 1% india is there in the international market so that is the one area where there is a tremendous potential for indian products for made in india and all that and already in the services sector we are export, our exports to of services you know the it companies our uh, people are all working in us and all that the it sector is really great but to that extent we are not caught up with the manufacturing sector so there is a tremendous potential for example the fish i was telling you there is a tremendous potential one of my friends who is an expert in aquaculture i happened to be with the fisheries university in tamil nadu as the head of the business school i was not knowing anything about that because i don't take fish at all and when i joined i thought what is there in this fish so after all the fish we are seeing in the fish market for that there is a university there set up i was thinking then i found the tremendous potential is there the fish can be processed the seafood is there then india is surrounded all the three sides by the ocean we are not exploited even 1% of the ocean belt like we are not exploited the export potential we are not exploited even 1% of the ocean belt there is a tremendous potential in the ocean we are talking of the land even in the land aquaculture there is a tremendous potential minimum is investment maximum return you invest only 5 lakhs to go to other pradesh and see every village will have more than number of aquaculture plots they are growing fish and this fish can be processed and they can be exported we are number one in exports we are doing good exports but it's not sufficient china is exporting large quantity china is the largest fish production we are number two but the gap is very high because you know the concept of fish as something non vegetarian that is the polish concept fish is not a non vegetarian then egg is also non vegetarian milk is also non vegetarian so nothing is non so only food habits food habits have to be changed we have been telling that fish is giving protein in the west bengal and kerala and all that people take fish every day in other places they are not taking because some social stigma and all that so what we say is there's a tremendous potential in fisheries there's a tremendous potential in agriculture agriculture is looking up like anything the processed food the food processing industries are void to take a large place then medtech where uh, we had a program on the medical equipment and all that it opened up like anything when the corona came the mask and the other ppes the personal protection equipment and uh, once again the scare of the macron and all that people have been advised to use only the best mask not the kind of one we get for 2 rupees 3 rupees as good as not wearing it don't wear it nothing is going to happen if you wear it nothing is you are not going to benefit so something having three layers or six layers they say it is advisable to keep a social distancing to keep a sort of a, to control your own visits and all that already the travel regulations are gone for uh, uh, travel uh, through the flight you are going to come for trains also so how long will they wait if the number of cases are going up so the new variants are coming so the, the maybe the third wave or something we do not know so it is providing abundant potential for starting at the same time people have to be resilient people have to i have seen because of the covid how the micro and small industries are affected as the chairman of the banking committee which arranges finance i used to get lot of complaints and all that the banks are not living fair the free banks are run with public money banks are not charity organization 
everyone who is investing in your project he is expecting a return whether is a angel investor or a venture capitalist or a bank or even yourself your own friends or relatives your own parent everybody is expecting a return either both principal as well as the interest they are expecting nobody is investing for the purpose charity and all that so that is not possible to invest for a, uh, expecting nothing except some donation funding which i mentioned all the others are expecting some money to be repaid by you either by a principal or by a interest maybe the rates will differ maybe banks are charging around 10% the angel investors will get about 30% return in again venture capitalists will get about 24% return only the rate is differing but the concepts remain the same so you will have to ensure that the funds are deployed to the best use unnecessary expenditure to be avoided unnecessary expenditure to be avoided and the extravagance to be avoided i always tell my entrepreneur friend see if i lose 1 rupee from my pocket i am only answerable to me if i lose the money which i have borrowed from somebody either from the bank or from any investor i am answerable to several people so please use the money judiciously please attend these programs and uh, learn from people have a mentor for you have a mentor for you okay yes please we'll go to the question answer session thank you so much sir so this was really a very very knowledgeable session sir and actually it was paucity of time and uh, uh, as you also mentioned that uh, this subject matter actually takes around 3 to 4 hours and in our yeah. program yeah. it was around uh, our session was around for 4 to 5 hours there was two two sessions you had taken uh -huh. so it was actually a good expertise you have shown to uh, just sum up this session in such a short period of time okay. and participants you are requested to please uh, uh, ask your queries participant yeah. you can either write back or you can just raise your hand i will unmute you any question coming from participants i think someone was said about an, uh, there was a person jay yes jay. it is there he raised a point yeah so i am reading it for you sir ha so, please it is what to do if the investors are asking for a huge equity and negotiations are not being successful good question see nowadays as i mentioned to you the investors are asking for equity i said clear is it are they asking for equity or yeah so he is saying that investors are asking for huge equity huge equity mean in in uh, percentage or amount uh, in what you, form you can, you can can you clarify yeah you can write back please sir your question you can clarify more whether it is a huge amount is in form of amount or the percentage percentage, percentage. or both or both <laughs> it can be both also yeah it can be both see percentage see you avoid such investor my advice to you is today you have got several options as we discussed isn't it today there are several options if an investor is asking for a huge amount from you then it's not worth approaching that investor because after all we will not be able to service that much of debt we are even if it is equity we will have to service the equity also debt and the equity have to be serviced it is repayable isn't it even equity you have to pay dividend on that we will expect a very high dividend okay so what we do is depending on the size of the project depending on the size of the project choose the investor today you can choose the investor suppose the project is costing up to 50 lakhs 
I would advise you to go for the angel investor. Angel investors are not demanding a very big uh, stake in business and all that. Venture capitalists are asking. In the second stage, after 50 lakhs, you are, say your turnover has reached about a crore of rupees or something like that. Then you are in a position to dictate. You are in a position to dictate. You tell him, I give only 10%. Otherwise, I am not available. See, why do they expect a higher percentage of equity? Because their intention is, you do every work, I'll, I'll you be my slave, that's all. It's not like that. See, normally in business, I am an advisor to some half a dozen companies in Chennai. One foreign investor came, I'm giving a real example. I don't want to name the investor because these are recorded and all that. It will be offensive to that particular country from where he came. He is a foreign investor. He came with an investment. Sir, 50-50 let us take. My company is already making 1000 crores turnover, Achi Masala. He came with a proposal, I will take care of our export market in European countries. Let us form a Achi Exports Limited. I give 50%, you give 50%. Equity. Okay. Agree. We only said that the managing director will be from our company. You cannot become the managing director. You can have on the board representation, but not beyond that. No, no, no. Let me have 51%. Same question I'm coming. Major equity. I'll give 51%, you be 49%. They said I will only cater to the extremely European markets, Scandinavian markets, and all that. I'll increase the turnover 10 times, but give me 51 percent. He said, nothing to it. Though the FDI rules in India permit, 76 percent is permitted according to government of FDI in retail trade. In some cases, 100 percent FDI is permitted. But that is a cap. That's not the, you have got the right to choose, isn't it? Government of India is not telling you 100 percent to the over investor. Government of India is not telling you 76% and all that. You have to hold your business because when you lose control over the business, when I give 51%, I am only a passive spectator. I don't have any control on my business, on my baby, which has grown with great difficulty. So what you do is don't accept where they are demanding a higher percentage. It is just like a Shailak, you know, that famous Shakespeare story, the Shailak and the pound of flesh he was asking from uh, Anthony and all the time I read the story in those who read the Shakespeare. So don't go for that. Go for a moderate one. Say up to 26% you can go. Not beyond 26%. Keep 74% with you. Higher the you give to outsiders, what will happen is one day they will throw you out. They will say, you know, means most of these private equity people they don't stick to the company for a long time. They don't stick to the company. Suppose they invested about 10, uh, 10 crores and taken about 70% uh, share in our company. Tomorrow somebody comes for 20 crores, they'll sell it and go away. So within one year, 10 crores became 20 crores for them. 100%. But where you are? You are left with nothing. You are having only 30% uh, share and some new promoter will come He'll start dictating terms. It has happened in many Indian companies. Because of the FDI, one of the illegals of FDI, foreign direct investment is that is a problem. So, in small enterprises, today equity is available. Today equity is available. Take a small portion, say up to 26%. As you grow, you can increase the percentage. Then you start number of feeder companies. Don't have one company. Several letterhead companies. We call letterhead companies. Say 10, 15 companies. After all, incorporating a company takes 15 days time. You incorporate as many companies as possible. One for marketing, one for production of one particular item. That way you can reduce the GST also. You can come under the less than the, the, the 3 crores GST formula. So have number of companies. And you be the way. There is no limit on the number of Like you can have any number of DMAT accounts with the DPs, isn't it? In the same way, you have a number of companies for marketing one particular product, manufacturing. You start number of companies, start them, incorporate them, and better you take it as a 
private limited companies don't go for partnerships and the uh, other thing one other thing i want to caution you don't go for partnership and the uh, other things okay going for mainly private limited companies any sir, other question please yes sir so next question is sir in case of starting a self funded startup how to manage the funds the best way for how much time should we plan to sustain by ourselves yeah see there is no hard and fast rule at the beginning itself i told you the self funding should be avoided as much as possible you should go for institutional funding not private equity and all that today the mudra scheme is there you have got the national equity fund scheme is there there are so many schemes available so even if you have got funds i told you in the caution view don't invest all your money in that particular business okay you are invested okay initially to show some people sir in this venture i have not borrowed from any money i have put on my own money then i call that particular person are baba don't tell openly everybody you borrow borrow even today you go to tata company tata is not uh, he has also borrowed from so many sources reliance has borrowed from so many even i right now there was a public issue last week i deposited 10000 rupees in reliance industries for the shares is uh, 10000 is not a big amount for a mukesh ambani but 10000 10000 for how many people 1 million people what is the capital raised several millions of rupees several billions of rupees so he is going for an expansion it's not his money the shareholders money so better i always advise that the first have your margin to fulfill that the 10% whatever it is don't put your in the stake at a very large and the time limit there is no time limit horizon take back as early as possible your money take back as early as possible and start another venture today so many industrial units are lying closed you go to any website so many industries are available for sale at a very throw away price so when you are having money take back your money with the there are procedures to take back your capital then start another venture so that you have got some 10 or 15 companies so all are you can manage all of them after all can't you spend about one hour per day to one company you need not be all the time you can put somebody as a ceo there somebody as a production manager then monitor everything today even for the camera you can manage isn't it you can have a cctv cameras everywhere and uh, from one office you can see hundred companies like aditya billa is doing he is not visiting every company but he is watching every company he has got more than hundred companies in one man one seminar kumar mangalam billa said that when he took over the reins at the age of 20 after the death of his father he was perplexed how to manage this uh, so many units he was not even knowing the names of the companies which they are having where they are having madhya pradesh and up and bihar tamil nadu and all that but it's all learned and never park your funds completely your own fund have a small okay to fulfill the requirements of the banking system or to show your own eagerness for the project put a small amount but take back it as early as possible don't put it in the same venture take back i mean start another venture start another venture okay yes sir next question is uh, what are angel investors i explain to you the angel investors are indians who want to develop india in one word you know for example i am a retired uh, from the idbi and uh, bhcs i received uh, about 1 uh, crore my provident fund grant with the top what do you do with that what does a person a retiree does it he pulls the money in either post office or this one and all that he gets a return of about 7 to 6 percent i mentioned the angel investors are those who take risk they want to promote industrial development in india so that that money can be put to better use isn't it okay even if you put the money in the bank the bank is going to lend they are but they are getting some higher amount you directly start lending the angel investors are those who have an appetite for investment who are risk oriented people people who want to take risk but they don't start their own venture what they do is 
they most of them are nris you know nri deposits in banks in india is more than 30% i think we are aware of nri is depositing in you know kerala is the largest beneficiary the entire kerala economy is run by nri fund coming from dubai and other places up also a lot of people are there now nris are investing in bank bank deposit how much they get of that they get around 8 to 9 percent here they can get a higher interest but the risk is also more but they and they form a club they form a club together for example chennai angels i told you they are all the iits i made a mention about that i have close interaction with all of them similarly in iit kanpur also it will be there the alumni of the iit kanpur or iit karakpur or iit delhi so nit and all that they are all working abroad they want to do something for india to promote entrepreneurship isn't it so what they do is they come together there are also businessmen who are angel investors i am not telling only i gave an example iit but there are also businessmen who are gujarati gujus nri gujus they have formed an angel club in new york so we refer the project to them then they go through that maybe make a presentation over online presentation then they get convinced on that then they start investing in the project either they may remain for 3 to 4 hour 4 years till you reach the break even level or they may remain for a longer time also it depends on the project you cannot say they will remain forever or they will go after a short time but it's a very important source of funding for the entrepreneur angel investment nowadays is taking for example the byju's classes through angel investors only not venture capital the byju the ca need that all that coaching is only through that and so many platforms have come for assisting micro enterprises yesterday we did a deal for 100 crores through angel angel investor they are lend the money at about 14% 14% they are getting a return the bank had the investor they would have got 6 to 7% isn't it 14% they are getting investors and we are lending at around 18% even 18% is not very costly today compared to the market rate 18% through that platform only thing is it's a hassle free it's unsecured it's unsecured loan it's called hira nandani financial services then we have got one more finance one then scott is there yeah then so many other things are there where today you go to the website there are so many platforms where angel investors are lending through these agencies because they do not know that who is the entrepreneur you do not know them who is the angel investor so they act as a bridge like a bank is acting as a bridge between the depositor and the uh, the person who is a borrower you know between the depositor and the borrower the bank is acting like a bridge you do not know to whom the bank is giving loan the borrower does not know who has given the deposit only the bank knows both the parties so in the same way the angel investors are playing an important role in promoting entrepreneurship is a sort of a one is a due to patriotism i want to do something for my india okay i want indians to prosper i don't want them to languish in poverty one entrepreneur he provides employment direct employment at 10 percent indirect employment at 20 percent the statistics has proved so you are developing a breed of you are creating job isn't it you are creating job which the government cannot think of so an entrepreneur is creating job for minimum 20 percent directly and indirectly so i cannot do that i let me do it through them at the same time my funds are safe i am taking a calculator risk i am getting a higher return so it's a win win situation for the angel investor for the entrepreneur yes anything else? Yes, sir. So, next question is for products uh, related to environmental issues. Hmm. Uh, are there any ways to get partial funds from state or government agencies? Environmental means uh, pollution control equipment. You mean? Yeah, maybe he is uh, referring to environmental issues. Environmental issues mean, see, suppose you are manufacturing some equipment, then it can be, see, any other, everything has to be converted as a project. Yes. basically you must have a business plan you cannot uh, get the any angel investment or anything any of these 16 i mentioned without a business plan 
you must have a strong business plan basically and you must be devoted committed to that i always say that never even in the midnight day you wake you up i ask you for the features of the project what is the what is the projected sales turnover the second year you cannot say sir let me look at my computer and then answer to you no keep it in memory keep it in memory that is your baby that means you are committed to the project the second year what is going to be my turnover what is going to be my profitability ratio what is going to be my uh, how many uh, how long will it take for me to achieve the break even level what are the constraints what the, what are the opportunities and threats you should be knowing everything so if it is an environmental issue also so it has to be a product or a services it has to be a product or services services what i mean for example after that covid came once again people started disinfecting you know very well you know that's what yes, people sir. started disinfecting their surroundings and all you know recently chennai faced the heavy floods all our house everything was floating in water you might have read in the paper we were facing it actually uh, yes sir we need deep water and all everywhere water logged for more than one week okay now it was really disinfected isn't it immediately the environmental people you know that pest control in the yard all that like that there are so many small players also say so they started disinfecting houses and all this they they regularly take up an annual maintenance contract they come to our house every month one of the days they remove all the cobwebs they clean all these windows and all that they become a, even a ordinary households are undertaking not the corporate houses i mean even small houses having only one bedroom or two bedroom they come and disinfect the toilet they put the you know the cop base which are developed the cockroaches and all those things they do environment alive then pollution control equipment okay they manufacture pollution control equipment recently one of the environmental issues is the water scarcity one of my friends in bharat uh, this yuvashak chitra from the atmosphere you collect the air from the atmospheric air you know the droplets are formed engineers you will be knowing better i am not an engineer so it is kept in various schools in tamil nadu you get the pure water you get the because most of the schools are having in the pot you know the earthen pot and all that it may not be hygienic it might have been filled one month back the school management might not have changed that will be taken by the children they may fall sick isn't it they may get fever and all instead of all those things what they do is from the atmosphere you put that one it cost about 8000 rupees give us as a donation we are donated to 50 schools from bosc they are going to schools so 50 schools they have got the water from the atmosphere and when you just press you get the pure water okay so these sir, are all on the environmental side yeah yeah sir one last question uh, can you please explain factoring subsidy once again factoring mm -hmm. subsidy okay yeah. the factoring is a very it was a new one when i entered the banking industry today it is very common so factoring it removes your headache so i have sold some commodity on credit i should wait till that man repays i do not know when i telephone he may not give the phone or he may face some problems in his own business he will say i am not able to pay you then what will happen to my industry it will be closed down many of the units the sickness is due to non payment of dues by the debtors either services or goods both they are not repaid in time or on time or they are not repaid at all one of the companies where my own cousin brother started it is iit and tech he underwent all programs and all that he was doing very successfully okay he was manufacturing conveyor belts and all that material handling equipments now he sold everyone even american companies they did not repay even after 6 months the banker will not wait for 6 months if we do not pay the interest and all that it was classified as a non performing asset the assets were sold he lost his interest so the receivable management is very very important more than inventory management so in the case of receivable management factoring comes to our help the factor takes away your receivables 
gives you the money, say 80% or 90% it gives you immediately. And today, the factoring organizations, they are able to collect the money because of the so many legislations passed by the government, the delayed payment tax and all that, the large buyers cannot. Not only that, they take insurance cover. They take insurance cover. You know, for export, there's already export credit guarantee corporation that I heard. Export factoring, you exported something to US. You are not payment, got the payment after three months. The export finance corporation is paying you the due. It's the insurance taken. Factoring is not insurance. Factoring is the factor pays you the money immediately. In case a factor is not able to recover the dues from the person who are debtor, he goes for insurance. So you may add the insurance cost also. There the subsidy is coming from the government. Because normally the factoring cost, if you add everything, taking into account the insurance and all those things, it comes to about 20%. They cannot, you cannot sell your item to somebody, okay, I will collect 80%, I am happy. Your margin may be only 10%, then how I can take only 80%? So the, what the factor does is, in the case of micro and small industries, up to 5 crores only, not for all exports, the government of India is giving subsidies. So the factor, he adjusts the subsidy and gives you, like electric vehicle, no? You buy an electric cycle, the cost may be about 60 to 70,000 rupees. Electric cycle, he do and all. He is selling at 50,000 rupees. He has got the subsidy from the government, so he passes on to the consumer. In the same way here, the factoring institution also gets the, sometimes as a grant. For example, the World Bank is giving a grant to the factoring organization. When we are in... Uh, we are operating that grant scheme from the World Bank. The World Bank line of credit. When the World Bank gives a line of credit to any country, India, say they are giving a hundred billion dollars. Around ten percent is a grant. They don't want you to repay. And even if you want to repay that ninety billion dollars, it's very nominal interest rates. For example, the Metro Rail and all that, the Japanese bank has financed at one percent. Can you imagine? What is it they are going to give one percent? They could have made it a zero also. One percent is a nominal cost. Can anybody lend at one percent? Can any bank in India do that? Chennai Metro, Mumbai Metro, Delhi Metro, all are financed by the Japanese Bank for International Cooperation. One reason is Japanese by nature, they are charity minded. They are charity minded. They understood the purpose of life. Purpose of life is to help each other, not to become for my selfish. I should have everything. My neighbor should not have anything. No. All should prosper. Sarve jana sukhino bhavanti. Vasudeva kutampada. But we are not practicing it. We have to practice it. So number one, that is the reason. Second thing is, in foreign countries, there is no high interest rate as in India, the deposits. They don't get any interest on their deposits. They pass their fund. They don't get any interest. Even 1% is a good return for them. For example, in US and all that, you invest in US bank, you get 2% interest, that's all. That is why the LIBOR there is hardly 3%, 3 to 4%. Why the foreign currency loan is very cheap, external commercial borrowing, because the cost of funds for the lender is hardly 6%. But in India, you know the cost. And added to that, the non-performing asset. A person does not repay you are funding him also, isn't it? The bank is not able to recover interest from him. So he passes on the burden to the person who is paying it. See, there are two categories of people who repay in time, who don't repay in time. The person who do not pay, repay in time or does not pay at all, there he is not able to collect any interest. So that risk is also born to them. It's like punishing a good student for the sake of a bad student. Because he has not repaid the interest. So the cost of uh, borrowing, my cost goes up because of that, because of the RBI norms and all that. So we are charging 11%, 12% in India. This is very high. You cannot do business at 12%. When my foreign uh, bank friends, they come and ask, what's the interest rate you are projected in the cash flow statement? I told them I am projecting 12%. Ah, 12% Baba. How you can earn 20% return on a project? Hardly IRR is 10%. Because one of the basic factors in Indian uh, system is 
high cost of deposits and the high cost of lending. That is one reason. So what we are doing is the factoring. There is a subsidy element available, but once again they have got certain norms. You say, for example, if your track record is very poor, then I cannot give you factoring. Now all those things are removed. Now even private factors are entered the market, like asset reconstruction companies. Yeah, asset is considered as bad by the bank. There are so many papers willing to buy that. They need not advise in the paper. Even government has got there. National Arrest Asset Construction Corporation they have formed. So the bank will pass on that bad debt account to that corporation. That's all. Bank will not do the recovery portion. Normal recovery they will do. It has become a chronic problem. Not a recoverable case. Hardcore. They will pass on to that Asset Construction Corporation where experts will manage. For example, I am having a severe cancer. I cannot go to a nearby hospital or APBS doctor. It has to go to the specialized treatment, isn't it? In the same way, finance also, what we are decided is hardcore cases cannot be done by the grassroots banks. Grassroots banks can give 10,000 rupees loan, 1 lakh loan, small micro enterprise to an agriculturist, to an educational loan, to some uh, trader like that. Why do you bother him with all kinds of recovery problems? He will be demotivated. So to remove him, we do all this. Okay, any other question? No, sir. I think all the questions are closed now. Yes. And if other questions uh, we receive, we will direct it to you. Certainly, welcome all the time. I am very happy to associate with uh, the Millet and uh, the Foundation and also with the IEE, the UP chapter and yes. the organization by It has been my pleasure. I always take it as a pleasure to interact with uh, these things because what I feel is whatever the experience I gain. I continue to get experience by talking to people like uh, Dr. Shashank and all that because it's a learning experience for me more than the teaching experience. I take it as a learning experience. See, the, the institute which I am a director is promoting the rural entrepreneurship. You know, all the 20 students are from villages and they cannot even speak properly. If you ask them what is your name, they can't answer properly. Yeah. My name is so and so, they can't say that. And they are all graduates. <laughs> That's the kind of education we are having. Because of the COVID, you know that most of the colleges are closed for online coaching. Yeah. Now, online has spoiled totally because there is no involvement. The student you are thinking is listening to you is not listening. He has just put on the mobile and gone. You think his attendance is present. That's all. Because I take online classes for VIT University also. Most of them are present. Only the mobile is present. The man is not, man or woman is not present. So they are not able to answer properly. The questions are also made in such a way that they can get 80%. Most of the state governments, you know, the syllabus and all that for EPA has been reduced. I think you are aware of that. Yes, sir. So what will happen to the people who are coming out of these colleges and all that, say for 2020, 21, 22, like that, they will not be able to face the competition because of the online. So I'm not against online, but it has to become a regular classroom so that you are having to have, to have IPI contact with the teacher. He is able to explain better. And you are able to take part in sports activities. For example, there is no sports. They are all confined to the houses. They can't go out. The children cannot go out. The parents will tell, oh, no, if you go out, you will catch corona. Go out, don't go out. Be sit at home all the time. Watch the TV. There is no activity, isn't it? The child needs to play the field, isn't it? Yeah. It has to go for play. Whatever uh, play cricket or sport, kabaddi, whatever it is, that's a play. That's the childhood. That's the nature of the child. But all these things are, you know, the, the, the congenitive abilities are getting displaced by this. And once again, by the fear created by the Omicron and all that, I don't know what is going to happen. But uh, we wish that we pray God that the things should not become worse. Definitely. Uh, we should uh, we all pray for the mankind. So that we are able to lead a normal life. This is a question of the pathetic life of the unorganized sector. You and I are not very much worried. We are more managed because we get the regular income or we have got some resource to support it. The unorganized sector, the 40% of the Indian population, because I am dealing with them day in and day out in the villages here, Kanchipuram, in Tamil Nadu. So their condition is pathetic. They don't have regular income. So they are not able to get, even uh, they are not going for vaccination. 
all kinds of false theories are floating that if you get vaccinated you will become important you get vaccinated then you will get catch uh, so that is indirectly the government is asking to kill you <laughs> so that your immunity will go down after six months see all kinds of false notions you see see about the vaccine of course in tamil nadu it has achieved 76% the first dose the second dose many are not done yeah you just like you know i have crossed the off the well that you are going to fall inside the well you have to cross completely so even two doses they are not enough they are telling you should have a booster dose now they are telling people of my age must have a booster dose maybe that that's required because uh, after all its efficacy may be only for a few months yeah see this was the scientists and the researchers to find out so the times are uh, rather uh, difficult for uh, Uh, this one, but still, what we find is that uh, large number of entrepreneurs are coming, particularly in the, the I have been dealing with the business school for a long time, and uh, I have seen a sea change. Many are opting to become an entrepreneur. Maybe one reason is there are not sufficient employment opportunities, or the way they want to get employed. You no, know? uh, probably there are sufficient funding opportunities now. Now there are some. You are correct. there are sufficient funding opportunities and uh, we are suggested to the i am just completing with the last one we are suggested to the government as i have as i mentioned the chairman of the committee for bank loans of the bjp so we recommended to the honorable finance minister as well as to the prime minister i received the acknowledgement you set up a separate bank for entrepreneurship development yeah don't combine with the existing banks because existing banks have got so many norms and all that and the mindset very important the mindset normally a banker think he has small loan will not get repaid he goes with that notion maybe that he has developed he has seen so many bad loans so naturally you know you become vexed with you know your attitude you know see some people always think tomorrow is better than brighter than today some people always curse the fate they are what is that happen they will not repay why you are why should you give loan that tomorrow uh, hundreds of questions will be asked from my auditors and all that so this kind of fear psychosis can be removed we have a bank which will promote entrepreneurship from a to z number 1 number 2 it will give equity funding it will give loans it will help in marketing it will provide mentoring more important it's not enough today we have got a vast army of retired people people are retiring at the age of 60 normally they are healthy and healthy up to the age of 80 So what do they do with the twenty years? Sit at home, read the newspaper, watch the TV, or go for a morning walk. That's all. Or do some yoga. Still, they are left with so much of time, maybe ten to fifteen hours. They would like to contribute to the development of this country. Yeah. So they can become mentors. They are mentors. They are distinguished in their own field. I am a mentor for about hundred and twenty. How do I get time? I spend time with them. That's all. So I say about two, three minutes, one hour like that. So mentoring is very important. Hand holding, what you call as a hand holding for entrepreneurs. Number one. Number two is low cost funding. You cannot provide loans at twelve percent, thirteen percent. No industry can raise it. If an entrepreneur gets a mudra scheme at eleven percent, I'm the mudra coordinator. He cannot repay. You may give without collateral, but what about the interest? Who can pay at eleven percent and all that? from month starting itself for two years don't charge interest interest free don't recover interest from him in accounting what they do they don't charge the interest they charge later yes no that is not fund that is called you know funding they take it as a term loan for the interest and they recover it as called amortization finance language don't amortize don't recover interest give it interest free for two years because then that corpus should come then get these angel investors all these people to come through that through the entrepreneurship development bank yeah so that they will be also more comfortable that you are doing things in a more organized way yeah angel investors venture capital all the the development financing corporate uh, of the us and all that they will all provide funds so for channelizing funds you have the dedicated team don't put this uh, three months if your loan is not repaid npa If it is not repaid within one year, I will go and lock the factory. After two years, I will auction it. It's not going to solve. It's going to only develop a fear psychosis. 
Yeah. Are you willing to develop peer psychosis or you want to achieve industrial development? I made a presentation to the Honorable Finance Minister when she was in Chennai. She appreciated and she said, please send me the total details. So I said that you, today there is no dearth of uh, manpower in our country. Funds are available, as you rightly said. You have to develop only entrepreneurs. So when the other two are there, the third one will automatically come. Make and every college, every engineering college, every arts and science college as an entrepreneurship breeding center. Don't make it as a placement center. I find some advertisement. We got the employment placement in IT companies, 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs. IIT got placement about 50 lakhs. How many entrepreneurs did you develop? Why you are not giving that statistics? Why you are giving the statistics? These are all mostly companies. You know very well. When a person is paying 50 lakhs to a person, his worth is 10 times in human resource accounting. You can verify with the, any HR accounting person. If somebody is paying me a salary of 2 lakhs, my worth is to that company, I give back 20 lakhs. Then only that person pays me 10%. HR accounting is 10%. When I am getting 2 lakhs, that means I am contributing 20 lakhs to that company. So when somebody company is benefiting 50, 50 lakhs they are giving, because of me they are making 5 crores turnover, whatever it is profit they are making. So when I am having so much of wealth, human resources, the most important asset of an organization, why should you hesitate to form an entrepreneurship development bank? Probably in the next budget we hope the announcement will be made. So that, and we also told them, Start opening in every district headquarters, every place. Don't do it only in Lucknow or Kanpur or Meerut uh, at Lanka. Everywhere throughout the country. Particularly focus on northeastern region, which is totally undeveloped even today. Eastern region. So I was in eastern region. I was in Bihar and all. That. Start in a big way, so that these institutions will definitely like the. What scheme we are having that uh, Mahatma Gandhi rural employment guarantee scheme where 100 days minimum uh, wages are given to villagers. It's a big boon. It will create a very big impact. So you will find people will not, even if you offer a job, they will not come. They will become an entrepreneur. So today, if you have got choice, people want to get employed. They don't want to become an entrepreneur. Isn't it? But of course, some people want to become an entrepreneur, even if they want to get a job. But you will find a day where even if a very good employment is available, if people will not come to the job, people will become an entrepreneur. That day should come. So thank you so much for uh, giving me so an much, opportunity. Man. And thank I you. hope I made an impact. And let us continue yes. with this impact for a longer time. And we, we would like to host you again and again, sir. <laughs> welcome. Anytime you are welcome. All thank the time you. available. Thank you. I so hope much. the God, by grace of God, and uh, I am a very senior person, so I am competent to bless all of you. So <laughs> I pray God and uh, that uh, His blessings, the blessings of Lord Krishna, will be available to all of us, so yeah. that we lead our uh, life the most uh, non-partisan and the unselfish way, yes. so that we are become useful to the mankind in one way or other. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you all the participants. We will meet in next week. Thank you so much, sir.